against my moving forward. I silence you now in the name of Jesus. When the heavens are brass, when the heavens are brass, the Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 23. When the heavens are brass, Deuteronomy 28, I read 23 to 24. When the heavens are brass, when the heavens are brass, Deuteronomy 28 from verse 23. Listen carefully to these words of scripture. And thy heaven. That is a personal heaven. That's what that thy means there. And thy heaven. That is over thy head. Shall be brass and the earth that is under thee shall be iron the Lord shall make the rain of thy land powder and dust from, from heaven shall it come down upon thee until thou be destroyed a particular situation is described here which I want to expand more for you to understand please note this scripture that we have just read here then in Ephesians chapter 6 Verse 12. Ephesians. Ephesu. 6 12. Popular scripture. For we wrestle. Not against flesh and blood. But against principalities. Against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world and lastly against spiritual wickedness in high places spiritual wickedness in the heavenly please note that scripture too turn back to the same Ephesians chapter 3 verse 10. Ephesians 3.10 To the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. To the intent that now Unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places. Please understand this very, very well. From the three passages we've read, there are some clear messages which you must try to understand <laughs> this has gone beyond personal deliverance now no. it's gone beyond going for deliverance now it's gone above that these passages bring out some salient points for your life to prosper the heavens must be involved that's the first point you must understand for your life to prosper heavens must be involved say for my life to prosper heaven must be involved can you say that again 
Say it again. We be alert, cause he. That's what the Bible says. He didn't yet be believed. A man shall receive nothing. Any yokoleri onkoba except he be given from above. Because you go have a fun lati okewa. Whatever is not given to a man from above will eventually swallow him and kill him. You got a wife that is not from above, the wife will kill you. You get a husband that is not from above, the other will kill you. You acquire money that is not from above, the money will kill you. You got a position that is not from above, that position will kill you. A man Man shall receive nothing. 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 Means nothing. Except he be given from above. So for the life of man to prosper, heaven must be involved. A destiny remains stagnant until a connection is made between heaven and earth. That is how the Lord has made it. Before the life of Jacob could begin to prosper, his life began to prosper the day the connection was made between heaven and earth. The heavens opened, the angels were going up and down. And from that day, his life began to prosper. There are three heavens. That is the heaven you see the aeroplane, the rockets, the missiles flying in. That's the first heaven. Everybody can see that one. There is a second heaven above that one. That place is the headquarters of darkness. When the Bible says spiritual wickedness in heavenly places, it's talking about that second heaven. Then there is a third heaven where God took. Paul too. That is paradise. The heavens of God. The Bible talks about heaven of heavens. The heavens that is above us. Is the headquarters of darkness. The heavens above us. Is the battlefield for spiritual warfare this is a strange situation in many lives dark powers have made the heavens to become brass each person on earth is to make connection with heaven the dark powers are also in the heavens. They understand that without you making that connection, you are not going anywhere. So they try to make it brass. So that that heaven can close. This is a serious matter. Each man has an heaven over his or her head you have an here space allocated to you above there are personal heavens there is family heaven there is ministerial heaven there is territorial heaven that is national heaven it may be open Close. I'm praying from my heart here 
for any family here today whose heaven over the family has closed and because of that everybody in the family is going through what you call collective captivity everybody in the family is in one trouble or the other if you are from that kind of family I use you as a point of contact this morning and I command that heaven to open over your head. Let it be open. Let it be open. 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 Let it open. In the name of Jesus. Each man has an heaven over his or her head. That heaven contains your reign of blessing. The reign is there, only that you need to break the clouds and make it fall upon your head. That songwriter says, There shall be showers of blessing. So this is the promise of God. There shall be seasons refreshing coming from the Father above. Say there are dews around us. It's so, for the showers we are praying. I pray for anyone here that the enemy has converted your rain to dew. Repossess your rain now. In the name of Jesus, we all have personal heavens. That's what the Bible says Die heaven. Die heaven. Which is over thy head. We all have our personal heavens. That heaven governs and controls your life. Powers of darkness can decide to operate in your own personal heaven. Brass forces can thicken that heaven over a person's head. Whether you believe it or not, whether it's scientific in your ears or not, there is a highly structured, highly organized demonic kingdom at various levels of authority with headquarters in the evilest above our head containing rebellious and fallen spirits sometimes they come down and mix with men the principalities in a person's heaven will be contesting your prayers anytime you want to pray that is a force that is a force those are the brassy forces in the azure above wickedness can be programmed against a person in that heavenly but the beautiful thing is that your prayers can shake the wickedness of when the heavens are brass demons will overcome the person with ease because it's already brassy but god doesn't want us like this what god wants us to have is what is called open heavens when there is open heavens beloved god localizes his presence over a particular individual over a church over a city over a nation over a business when there is open heavens heaven touches the earth by pouring out blessings and power 
When there is open heaven, a person receives an unhindered experience of heaven on earth. Unhindered experience of heaven on earth. When the heavens are open, there will be unhindered manifestation of the grace, glory, power of God. If father go When the heavens are open, there will be suspension of natural laws. to enable the heaven connect the earth. When the heavens are open, there will be occurrence of signs, wonders, miracles, healings. Amen. Revelation testimonies. Amen. Isha Yanu, if you want, Bobo Ijeri, you're my pharaoh. When the heavens are open, there will be unusual manifestation of the power of God. Strange miracles that will shock people will begin to take place. When the heavens are open, it will be a time of divine visitation. When the heavens are open, it will be a time of angelic visitation. Powerful dreams. Promoting visions. Positive prophecies. When the heavens are open, when the heavens are open, there will be occurrence of open divine communication. When your heavens open, it will be a divine turning point in the history of your life. When the heavens are open, you will have continuous success and favor. Continuous. continuous. It's not that you get some money now and until that money is dried up, nothing else is coming in. You have continuous success and favor. When the heavens are open, you have this liberty and freedom in prayer. When the heavens are open, that's why I'm praying for somebody here today. That God shall tear the heavens open for your sake. He shall tear it open. 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 In the name of Jesus. But then, when the heavens are brass. Nothing will go smoothly. The enemy will be mocking your prayer. The person will plant much, plant much, but reap very little. Then the all of life becomes a struggle. Struggling. Struggling. When the heavens are brass, that what you call profitless hard work. So one of the greatest things that can happen to a man is to have an open heaven. And one of the most terrible things that can happen to a man is for the heavens to become brass. For the earth to become iron. And for the rain to become powder and dust. When the heavens have become brass, there will be scarcity of testimony. There will be lack of divine vision. No divine dream. No revelation. When the heavens have become brass. When the heavens have become brass. There will be chain problems. 
One problem is going. Another one is coming. The person is just inside with one problem or the other every time. When the heavens have become brass, there will be unexplainable hardship. There will be confusion. When the heavens have become brass, when the heavens have become brass, there will be attack on your prayer life. Attack on your attempt to live a holy life. Where others get light, you get darkness. Where others get respect, you get insolence. Where others get cooperation, you find contention. Where others find honor, you begin to find contempt. Where others are getting praise, what you get is criticism. Where others are having peace, you will have war because the heavens have become brass. Where others have liberty, you, the person will experience slavery and bondage. And then the person begins to speak the language of brassy heavens. I have prayed. I have fasted. Yet nothing has happened. As languages of brassy heavens. I've been praying for by the best ministers. To no avail. Languages of brassy heavens. I'm fed up. I don't think God is. Listen to me. God cannot do it. I will go and be trying something else. I'm frustrated. I will stop coming to church. Languages of Brazilian. Say, Lord, what is my sin? Why are you doing this to me? Those are languages of Brazilian. So, as many people as are concerned here this morning, about your life your progress your calling your destiny the first thing to check is whether your heavens are closed or not if it is not open and this is what happens the whole of life will become a struggle you will need more laborers to do a little work. Oh, nilo a wala ba she, la ti she ije kekere. Problems will remain the same after multiple deliverance. Le yon kolo ko itu si le a wala ishoro yo i drop yon she wa. The person will be laboring on hard ground. Oh, nito a yon mala kaka lori le to le. Person will sweat and sweat and sweat so much, but you achieve very little because the heavens are brass. Oh, nito a yon lagu 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 shubon. The person will notice that there, is, there are devourers around, released onto the person's labors. You are praying, you are praying, you find that there is no fresh fire. Your prayers are becoming ordinary noise. Your mind is wandering now during prayers. The Bible reading has become a routine. Your quiet time has become a religion. You get no more benefit from Bible study. It is a sign that the heavens are brass. Unbelievers are tossing you here and there. And you find it so, so easy to coexist with darkness. They sing the joy of the Lord is my strength, but you know that that joy is not your strength. Then you need to look deeply into the heavens over your head. This is why we are here this morning. To attack this 
kind of situation. I pray that today, whatsoever is making the heavens to become brass, will be shaken off in the name of Jesus. There are ten major things that makes the heaven to become brass. One, sin. Sin. Any sin in your life will close the heavens. Two. Prayerlessness. Will block the heavens. Three. Pride. God hates pride with perfect hatred. Four. Four bloodshed shedding blood abortions and things like that it doesn't matter whether you have done that years and years ago the blood may still be crying against you now five falsehood anytime you build your life on a lie you are closing heavens over your head. Igba kigba to ba ko aye re le ori ro. O n ti orun mo aye re ni. Any time what you are doing is only lie. Igba kigba to o n to n se ba je ro. You close the heavens over your head. O n se orun to n be ni ori re ni. Six. Ikefa failure in tithes and offerings. Kiku na ni si son ore ati dame wa close the heavens over your head remember God said bring the ties and offering to his house so that he will open to you the windows and doors of heaven when you fail in ties and offering God will deliberately lock up the windows and doors of heaven seven idolatry any form of idol worship closes the doors of heaven against the person. It makes heavens to become brass. Eight territorial spirits. Territorial spirits. The influence of territorial spirits. Local strongholds. Territorial strongholds. They make heaven to become one. Now, satanic intermediaries. You have a satanic intermediary either working with you, living close to you, or in your environment. That's why you cannot take a child of the devil and make that child of the devil your business partner because it will cause trouble for you. And tenth one, satanic altars. Whether a defunct altar or an active altar. They close the door. Against a person. What do we now do this morning? The first thing is genuine repentance. And restitution. Genuine repentance. Restitution. The second thing to do is that God wants deliberate and sincere humility. Deliberate and sincere humility. Three. God wants you to break all family altars. And central altars. Gideon was not going to get far until he had dealt with the altars of his father's house. Gideon, Obama, you have to go to the father. And finally, this morning, you, you need to get involved in ceaseless, fervent, and 
desperate prayers. Odilo, lati ko pa ninu adura aijanu adura to gbono ati adura ipa ceaseless adura ti o ti ajanu fervent gbono and desperate prayers. Ati adura eni to ti sun kon gi. You have to pray until the rain begins to drop. Oni lati gba adura you have to pray until something happens. The church continued to pray until they had Peter knocking the door. Anna continued to pray until she had the promise. Paul and Silas prayed until they felt the shaking of the prison. Daniel prayed until he felt the touch of God upon his life. Do you want to get to the top? Then pray until something happens. Don't get up until God answers. Never accept the present position as final. And those are the kind of prayers we're here to pray this morning. I see people here this morning who will begin to experience a new lease of life. Immediately their heavens begin to open up. A lot of people don't understand these principles of open heavens. Sometimes we attack what we should not be attacking. And we worry ourselves and we should not worry ourselves. Once God opens the heavens over a man or a woman, then you are mightily blessed. Because that open heavens, beloved, will be an entrance into your divine destiny. Favor will now begin to descend. Your wares will begin to sell. Your enemies will begin to bow. And will begin to serve obituaries to your Goliaths. When the heavens are open, rebellious children get born again. You begin to have storehouses of the Lord. People will bring gifts to you. You. and you will be promoted no one will be able to hurt you when the heavens are open but once it has become brass through sin or any of those things that we have mentioned then we need to take some actions rise up on your feet now rise up on your feet all eyes closed but you see if you are here today and you are not born again you have not just surrendered your life to Jesus do so very quickly now before we go into these prayers by raising up your right hand where you are and say what I'm going to say after say father in the name of Jesus, I come before you now. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Take control of my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This prayers we're going to pray. The prayers that has to strike down wickedness in personal heavens. Many of us say we have suffered for too long. Enough is enough. You say, Oh, heaven! If you like, say, Over my career, over my marriage, over my children, over my business. Over whatever you want now. That's why I say we have few time, few minutes to pray. Can I hear you roaring like thunder? Over my career. Amen. Amen. Then your open will be roaring like thunder. It's a command. It's an order. 
said, Thou shalt decree a thing and it shall okay. be established. Oh, That's wonderful. 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 This next prayer is a prayer that will have to bring immediate testimonies. Principalities of my father's house. In my heavens, can I hear the sisters saying this louder? I think the sisters you try more than this this morning. Brothers, let your voice roar like fire. Everybody together now. In the name of Jesus, deal with us, pass. In the name of Jesus, oh yes, Makata Satala Kaya Boshendera Makaya Ba Baribo Sapia Nkanda. In the name of Jesus, yes, just continue, continue. That's what I do. Continue, 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 continue. That's what I do. Aha, then, aha, 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 then, aha, aha, then. Aha. Ben. In Jesus name we pray. Lord God, Jesus, la badura. Someone is there. And you go ni. Your body is being used like a demonic whistle. One loara re gege bi fere satani. And evil wind is blowing on you and I'm blowing through you. A fe fe bu buru fe lu o sin fe gba inu re. That prayer you just prayed now. Adura to se gba ni titi. As cancel the evil wind. O ti fa di la fe fe bi buru mo. And I say in sort of this prayer. Ni to re adura yin. I have a word to the Lord for somebody I don't know who the person is. O de oro la to do oluwa fun eni kan bi o me ni no. The Lord said I should tell that person who has prayed with fire and with thunder. Oluwa ni we fun eni e to ti gba adura pelu ina ti ara. That your stubborn opposers shall fight it out. We are one la ta ko re to la gidi ni o pa ra oja. They shall fight it out. Shall fight out. Say this loud and clear. We may love every power. Attacking my joy. Attacking In the name of Jesus. That's right. Jesus. 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 Masekatenda ya boshende raba. Riapoli katanda raba. Aha, 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 aha. In Jesus' 
I want you to pray. It's to jump start the recover your wealth program of tonight. It will be a serious tragedy if you keep quiet. Can you shout this louder than anyone around you? Oh, mountain of poverty! Oh, mountain of poverty. Yeah! In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Raise your two hands to the heavens and shout unto those your hands. Every chain upon my hands, binding my prosperity. Can I hear you shouting it loud? Then we pray with a voice as loud as thunder. Powers speaking against my prosperity. You are a liar. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray like that. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. A servant for the man. As the power of God is now beginning to move from person to person, that mountain in your life that has been harassing your destiny has been wasted now. for some people here and that will be the manifestation of what I'm saying now within 48 hours. The Lord said I should tell you that that enemy that has swallowed your finances shall forcefully vomit them. I have a word for somebody here too. The Lord said, I should tell you that you shall have sudden increase. Yes. Not only that, you shall have dramatic advancement. You will now shout this with anger. You need to be angry to pray this next prayer. Angels of poverty, clear away in the name of Jesus. Masikatani kaya bo shente raba, masitala kaya bo shente raba shente laba. Command them to clear away. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. I am going to count seven from here. And these are the things that will happen as I eat the number seven, which is the number of perfection. As I count that number to that number seven, any woman that the enemy has been swallowing your children through miscarriage, as I count this seven, the power of God will fall upon you and that yoke shall be broken. As I count this seven too, I somebody having very severe problem with your digestion. Any tiny food, your stomach is full. It's as if the enemy has tied it up. All of a sudden, the power of God will fall upon you. The padlock upon the intestine shall be broken to pieces. <laughs> On the count of seven, two, that lady over there, your parents worship serpents, 
these serpents have given you horrors. On the count of seven two, all the seven serpents around your life shall fly out of your body. Yes. And that person, anytime you wake up, find witchcraft scratches all over your body. Their scratches shall go back to them. As I count the seven two, there are some people here, they have used a child of the devil to replace you. They put that child of the devil in your position. The Lord will evacuate that child of the devil from your position. On the count of seven. At this count of seven two, those people who have been attacked by strange creatures in their dream, the covenant between you and those creatures shall be broken to pieces. Then, on the count of seven, mark my words, Anyone here tonight? And at the age of breakthrough, your breakthrough fishes away. You are suffering from near success syndrome. As I count seven, the demon supervising that failure shall lose its hold upon your life. One, two, three, four. Aha. The serpent is in trouble already. Five, six, seven. Look at what is happening. That's right. Yes, you must be released. You must be released. Tonight is tonight. The chain binding the legs, binding the hands, binding the waist. Look at what is happening. They are breaking to pieces. Every spirit of blood vision, cloudy vision, every spirit of cancer, every spirit of cataract and glaucoma, every spirit of earache and epilepsy, every spirit of hypertension and diabetes, every spirit of tiredness and exhaustion, every spirit of sleeplessness, every spirit of unnecessary itching, every mental illness, every power of miscarriage, every arthritis, bad breath, fibroid, heart palpitation, deformity, goiter, hear the word of the Lord. That place you are is not your habitation. For the strangers shall fade away, and they shall run out of their close places. I command you to get out now in the name of Jesus. Receive your healing. Receive it. 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 In the name of Jesus. Check your body now. Check it very well. Do what you could not do before. Healing virtue of God has touched so many people. Touch your body very well. Yes, something is still happening over there. You, the spirit of shortness of breath, I bind you and I cast you out. Now begin to breathe normally. In the name of Jesus, every spirit of constant pain, I bind you and I cast you out. In the name of Jesus, check your body now. Check it very well. Do what you cannot do. Check that pain. It's gone. Check that swelling. It's gone. You will now shout this loud and clear. Owners of the Lord of poverty. I am not your candidate. Is that the loudest you can shout it? Your voice is not loud enough. There is a woman who needs to shout out loud. Carry your Lord in the name of Jesus. Aha, aha, aha. They must carry their Lord back to the senders. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Amen. Something mysteriously powerful.
has just happened to somebody. There is someone here today. The Lord said, I should tell you these powerful words. That what has taken other people 20 years to achieve, you will achieve it in two months. Somebody said, right now, the enemy has swallowed your business. And you are here tonight praying the way you've never prayed before. Hear this word of the Lord. Even before the close of today, your story will have changed. Someone is here because of envy. They have written a damaging petition against you. And the enemy wants to use that petition to destroy you. I have a news for you from heaven. That all those who have written against you, they shall be disgraced. Uh Thank you, Jesus. I am going to come seven again from here. There are several young people here. You have the anointing to change your family history. But what we swallow that anointing is also in your body. I'm going to count seven from here. That destiny swallowing power will separate from your life. Thank you, Jesus. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven! That's the power of God coming upon you. That's number one. Number two, three, four, five, six, seven. Thank you, Jesus. You are in this meeting. Right now, you are counting in thousands. Before our next meeting, you begin to count in millions. Yes. I have a word for somebody here. That person that is using his position to stand against your breakthrough. Shall be removed within 24 hours. Thank you, Jesus. I want to pray for somebody here. You, the spirit of stroke and paralysis, hear the word of the Lord. It is written that He Himself bore our infirmities. And took away our sicknesses. Whatever arrow has been fired into the brain to cause stroke and paralysis, I bind them and I cast them out. In the name of Jesus. Okay. That person stretched that leg. Stretch the hand. The paralysis has gone. You get him paralyzed in one and one leg. But now, strength has entered. Yeah, it may be painful to walk, but as you walk, the pain will disappear. Thank you, Jesus. Lay your right hand upon your head. And you will speak to your head. My head. You will not carry the luggage of firewood. Are you ready? Can you say that again? Now let me hear you. Your voice is not loud enough. The voice is still not loud enough. Maybe you don't understand the prayer. Some people were cast in the Bible. The Bible says they shall be drawers of water and hewers of wood. That's what I say you should reject. 
Can you shout it again? In the name of Jesus. Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Now, shake that head. Shake it. Uh Shake it. Shake it. Every invisible load that anyone is carrying here that is causing lack of prosperity and that is causing blessings to be swallowed, I shake you off by the fire of the God of Elijah. Shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off. Amen. A threefold man. <laughs> Father, we thank you for what you have done. We cover the testimonies with the blood of Jesus. <laughs> Affliction will never rise again. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, lay your hands upon your people here. Let heavens over the prosperity of your children open. In Jesus' name we pray. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28. I read from verse 1. Dry financial bones. Live. That's our title. Dry financial bones. Leave. Can you shout that loud? In the name of Jesus. Deuteronomy 28, verse 1. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt act in diligence unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I commanded this day. Number 1. The Lord thy God will save thee on high above all the nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Two. Blessed shall thou be in the city. Three. Blessed shall thou be in the field. Four. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body. Five. And the fruit of thy ground. Six. And the fruit of thy cattle. Seven. And the increase of thy kind. And eight. And the flocks of thy sheep. Listen to number nine. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Ten. Blessed shall thou be. When thou comest in. Blessed shall thou be when thou goest out. Verse 8. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses. And in all that thou settest thy hand unto. Shall bless thee in the land. The Lord that God giveth thee. And verse 13. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. And thou shalt be above only. Thou shalt not be beneath. These are the promises of Jehovah. This program has an agenda. The agenda is to make God's people receive the miracle of council death. Two, is to cause deliverance from inherited poverty. Anyone tonight, if your great grandfather was poor, grandfather was poor, your father was poor. And now you are noticing that trend. In the name which is above all names. Jesus Christ. The son of the living God. Receive your deliverance now. In the name of Jesus. Let your heaven roar like thunder. This meeting. Is to remove from the life of us people. The get and lose spirit. Get and lose spirit. 
This meeting is to disgrace the spirit of pocket with holes. This meeting is an avenue to revive abandoned projects. This meeting is to revive abandoned projects and to recover stolen wealth. So anybody who is not ready for dramatic positive surprises should not be coming for the meeting. But those who are expecting both unexpected and expected breakthrough, this is the meeting they should come. This meeting is to bind and cast out spirits of poverty. This meeting is to claim unexpected and expected breakthrough. This meeting is poised to break the yoke of poverty. This meeting is to break the curse of poverty. This meeting is to eliminate financial blockages. This meeting is to make you recover the lost wealth of your father's house. This meeting is positioned to enable us to use our authority to speak life onto dead businesses, dead finances, dead careers to come alive. This meeting is to empower people to rewrite their financial history positively. This meeting is poised to magnetize the spirit of favor upon God's people. Can you raise up your right hand and say, I claim that voice is too low. The spirit of favor by the power in the blood of Jesus. Can you shout his love? Shout it again. Shout it the third time. This meeting has been assigned to reverse financial burial. This meeting has been delegated by heaven to issue marching orders to strange hands and strange legs that have worked into our finances. This meeting is to make God's people receive anointing for money yielding ideas. This meeting is to cause the riches of the Gentiles, riches of unbelievers, to be transferred to your heart. This meeting is to make God's people receive healing from financial leprosy. This meeting is positioned to connect God's people to divine opportunities. We had a strange case some time ago. Very strange case. This man has three degrees, but he could not even afford to feed himself properly. And he began to pray. One day, something stood by his window. I don't know what it was. And the thing spoke to him in Yoruba. He said, you are praying. See, you don't know that you, you are Akobata Pegbe. You are Akopanti Adugo. And you are Akpale Unjemo. He could not forget those three things. That, those, that evil power said. And I said, you know, don't bother to pray. That's your destiny. And the same kept recording, recording. Akuba Tafegbe, Akuba Manchi Adugo, Palein Jamo, and his life was dark until he started some prayers. Then one day, he hit a jackpot in the prayer. There are some prayers. When that specific prayer point hits the specific problem, the result is immediate change. This was the prayer that he prayed. That he has gone to the mountain to pray. He has gone all over the place. But the night he prayed that prayer, he said, powers pronouncing poverty on my life. That was the prayer. Can I hear you say that one? Your voice is not loud enough. 
Your voice is still not loud enough. Shout it loud and clear. In the name of Jesus. Makate sepila kate abo shandaraba. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. So this is the purpose of this meeting. And the Lord said to me, that son, the testimonies following this program shall be awesomely awesome. Because it's starting from tonight. Someone will leave this place and the first phone call they are going to get will change their story positively forever. <laughs> now listen very carefully. It takes wealth in some form to do anything here on earth. It is clear in both the Old and New Testament that it is God's pleasure to bless his children and to prosper his children. And whether you believe it or not, or whether you like it or not, God, our Father, wants us to have the best. Holiness, righteousness, is not synonymous with poverty. In fact, the only man is supposed to be the richest man. Abraham died. A rich man. He went to paradise. That poor man, Lazarus, also died. A poor man. He too went to paradise. So you can go to paradise two ways. Abraham star, Lazarus star. The decision is yours. The Bible says, And Abraham was very rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. Genesis 13, 2. And the Bible says, We are the children of Abraham. So the blessing that God gave to Abraham is available to us. Although it is available, whether you are getting it is another thing. Is the process and the activity and the practice to get it that we are here for now. The children of darkness, they understand the controlling power of money. So they have devised many satanic methods to obtain money. Lie, voodoo, money ritual. Recently in the newspapers, they arrested a man who used his own mother for money ritual. He placed his own mother inside his wardrobe and had kept the woman there for over 10 years. The cops had gotten rotten. It was still there. Because unbelievers, they want money. There was a couple. They met in the plane. I love you, I love you. The spirit of love you, the one tinting spirit, caught them. And they got married. They had two children. One nine, one six. One day, daddy told the children, I'm taking mommy out for dinner. You stay here and watch TV. So he took mommy away. Mommy never came back. And they say, why is mommy? Why is mommy? They'll be telling them, she travels, she'll come back. But there was a room at the back of the boys' quarters. Always under lock and key. The boy who is nine years old kept checking that door every day. I was wondering as a small boy, why are they locking this door? They locking this door. The door was always under lock. But one day, nobody knows what happened. They didn't lock the door. The boy got inside. What did he see? He saw his mother with a calabash on the head. He shouted, Mommy! Mommy came down. The daddy knew that something had gone wrong. There was a day. Those two people met each other in the play. But that love has disappeared now. Swallowed by the need for money. Every form of kidnapping they are doing in Nigeria now. Just to get money. Get money. The rituals that the people just disappear without trace. It's money people are looking for. Nothing else. I'm praying for somebody. Any power that wants to use you as a sacrifice, they shall die violently. Let your amen go on like thunder. Cheating to get money. 
stealing just to get money. Now there is another one again. Charismatic manipulation. Just to get money. Say, hey, you that woman over there. You come out town now very quickly. Yeah, you, 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 you. You wear the pink dress. Santo, 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 come forward now. And the woman comes forward. Say, your mother is a woman. <laughs> Say, yes, sir. You are wearing pink underwear. Yes, yes, sir. Your bra is white. Say, yes. Your phone number. 0803. Three something 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 something. I say yes, yes. So, okay, the Lord said, you have forty thousand naira in your bag now. So touch it out of it now for breakthrough. Charismatic manipulation. The house of God too. It's money they are looking for. Fake products. Anybody is used to swallowing tablet now. If you are not careful, you swallow fake drugs. That's it. One boy that used to be in my class in those days. He told me that his father used to put Gary cassava inside capsule to sell as tablets. When we did our exam, the boy failed all papers. Then he tried the GC in London. Those who they give A, B, C, if D, they give F. F means failure. Then they give another mark again, which is worse than failure. They call that one H. H. That H means hopeless. So every subject he did, they gave him H. The Gary that his father was put inside the capsule has caught up with him now. I'm praying for somebody here. Every iniquity of your father's house that wants to transfer property to you, I destroy it now in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Let your heaven roar like thunder. Deception, ham robbery, prostitution, gambling, academic stealing, pulling others down to get ahead, inflating prices of commodities, hoarding things. All these are what the children of the devil do to get money. Satanic stealing of virtues, bad day transfers. Somebody wants to celebrate bad day. He kills an animal. And he says, you animal, I transfer my problem, my sorrow unto you. All those who come to this party, let them share part of it. That's why it's dangerous to just be eating any, anywhere. And he celebrates bad day. He served food to everybody, but he didn't eat part of it. There is brain exchange. As spoiling and pulling others down. There is services that are fake. There is elimination of competitors. But there is a law. A law which nobody can change. Every wealth acquired wrongly must certainly be vomited. If the person did not vomit enough of it, his children and children's children will be vomited the rest. It's a law. It's also a law that the devil has no free gift. The devil operates a primitive trade by matter. Anybody who goes to get wealth from the devil will of course do it at a cost. Reminds me of that clever man who wanted wealth at all costs. And they took him to a native doctor who says, you want wealth? It's okay. They gave him three options. Go and bring the head of an albino. Say, ah, no. I cannot even cut the head of chicken, let alone the head of woman be sorry. Do you have anything more decent than that? It's okay. You gather seven coconuts and you go naked into the forest and you break all the coconuts, drink all the water from the coconut, and sleep in the forest naked and come out. You'll be rich. And anything more decent. Tell me that thing that one can do. Go and bring your wife. Ah, no, no. She's a nice woman. That's okay. Do you want to do the cock one? The cock. Say, what, what about that one? I say, yeah, the cock one will give you a cock. 
You take the cock home. The day you bring the cock back here, we we'll give the cock corn to eat. The number of corn that the cock eats is the number of years you will live. But you will be very rich. It's okay. So that one is better. He was a clever man. The day they gave him that cock, he began to serve the cock. And he served the cock for four days. So the day came. It's calculation. A cock that has been hungry for four days should be swallowing corn anyhow. So when he got to the place and they put corn on the floor, the cock jumped down in excitement. He picked the first one. Picked the second one. Picked the third one. And then sat down. Ah, ah. The man said, he has to eat more. The native doctor said, it has stopped. Ah, three. So that's all. He said, cock, don't do this to me. Eat more. The cock did not eat anymore. I knew the time the man died. He has to rule suddenly. He had plenty of money. Off the wealth. The enemy does not like wealth to be outside his kingdom. He knows that when money is in the right hand, they will use it to fight him. This is a very serious matter. And this is where battles come in. Get yourself ready now. Within the next few minutes, I want you to wear the cap of blind Bartimaeus, the cap of holy madness, as you pray this prayer. Say, angels of poverty, clear away in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to clear with those angels. wealth come upon me now in the name of Jesus receive the power now in Jesus name we pray say you the wicked Walk hard. Walk hard. Gather wealth. Can I hear you say that? I want you to say it in a commanding tone. Can you say it? Transfer it to me. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray like that.
name we pray. Stretch the right hand. Father, these hands that are stretched forward here, let them carry the fire of God. Let them carry the power of God. Let them carry the anointing of Jehovah. You hands receive the touch of fire. Receive the touch of power. Receive the touch of the anointing. In the name of Jesus. When this hand touches the sick, let sickness is vanish in the name of Jesus. Get yourself ready now. If you have any sickness in any part of your body, don't feel sorry for that place. Smite it 21 good times. And you will say, get out in the name of Jesus. Let's go. Aha. It's happening. Yes. Something is coming out of a woman over there. It's coming out of the womb. Receive your healing. That's the power of God coming upon you. Yes. Yes. The yoke of the enemy. It's broken. It's broken. It's broken. It's broken. You cannot withstand the power of God. The strangers shall be afraid. And they shall flee out of their close places. The strangers are going. They are going. They are going. Aha. Amen. Check your body now. Check it very well. Check it very well. Something strange has happened. To find that you have been healed. You cannot use your leg. You are using it. The pain has disappeared. After smiting the place. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Look at what is still happening over there. That's right. It's gone. That's right. It's gone. Don't be surprised. It's gone. Aha. Aha. Father, I thank you for your children who have joined this great physician hour. Let your mercy and grace overshadow their lives. Lay your hands of fire and power upon them. Move them forward in a new way in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Raise up your right hand to the heavenlies, beloved. O thou that troubled the Israel of my destiny. The God of Elijah shall trouble you today. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Our Lord and our God, we thank you for this day. We praise your holy name for bringing us to this wonderful service. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. And so, wonderful God, touch us by your power tonight. Lay your hands upon our destiny. Teach us directly from your feet. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Shout it loud, hallelujah. Let's have a seat. God bless you. Amen. Amen. This evening we're going to look at some of the deepest areas of scripture. And which sometimes can make a difference between a person living or dying. It has been well said that every man's mountain is a mountain of his ignorance. We're looking at what I call command the morning. Command the morning. Or if you like, commanding the morning. Sisters, what did I say just now? Brothers, what was that that was said? In Job chapter 38, I read verses 12 and 13. Job chapter 38, from 12 to 13. It's good for you to follow all the scriptures that are going to be read and be able to understand some deep things about the word of God. Job chapter 38 from verse 12. Are we there? This is God speaking to Job. 
Hast thou commanded the morning since thy days? That is Job, since your mother gave birth to you. Have you ever commanded the morning and caused the day spring to know its place? Another word for day spring is dawn. Day spring there means dawn. You can say dawn to know its place. The dawn is the period before the sun begins to arise. When the sun begins to come up. Dawn. That it might take hold of the ends of the earth. That the wicked might be shaken out of it. Notice this is God speaking. And notice that this fellow Job is a contemporary of Moses. And this book of Job really is the first book in the Bible. And here you have these deep words being said. I read it again in verse 12 and 13. As thou commanded the morning since thy days, and caused the day spring to know its place, that it might take hold of the ends of the earth, that the wicked might be shaken out of it. Another version of the Bible says, Have you ever in your life given orders to the morning? Have you ever sent the dawn to its correct post? Another version of the Bible says, In all your life, have you ever ordered the morning? Or have you ever shown the dawn its place? So that it may get hold of the corners of the earth and shake wickedness out of it. These are deep scriptures. But let me give you a little bit of background so you know where we are coming from. The Bible says, in the beginning God made the heavens and the earth. The Bible always speaks of plural heavens, plural heavens. The Bible talks about three kinds of heavens. There is the highest heaven which is called the third heaven. This is the place and throne of God. You can find that in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 2. 2 Corinthians 12 2. I knew a man in Christ about 14 years ago. Whether in the body, I cannot tell. Whether out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth. Such a one caught up into the third heaven. And I knew such a man. Whether in the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth. How that he was caught up into paradise and had unspeakable words which is not lawful for a man to utter. That is the third heaven, the paradise, where the throne of God is. The Bible talks about the second heaven. The second heaven, on the other hand, refers to the dwelling place of spirits, bad spirits. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12, that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and power. Rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness, wickedness in heavenly places. So there's a second heavens, which is the habitation of cruelty, habitation of darkness. But then there's the first heaven too. This first heaven is what you find in Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1 from verse 14. Genesis chapter 1 verse 14. It says this. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs. Let them be for seasons. Let them be for days. Let them be for years. Look at that again. Verse 14. Genesis chapter 1. And God said, let there be light in the firmament of the heaven. What is the duty of those light? One, to divide the day from the night. Two, for signs. Three, for seasons. Five, for days. Six, for years. And seven, in verse 15. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth 
and it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night. Then he made the stars also. What I've just read to you now is what is called the ordinances of heavenly bodies. The way they operate. Therefore, beloved, your life, my life, the life of everything on earth is connected to light. 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 It is the light that decides your age. It is the light that decides whether you are growing old or you are growing young, you are growing tall or short. It is the light that determines life. And there is a power that rules the night. There is a power that rules the day. That now takes us to the wonderful words of the psalmist. Who said, the sun shall not smite me by day, nor the moon by night. These have very, very serious implications. The few verses I've read to you now are being used by powers of darkness against ignorant Christians. Because they are aware that many of us don't understand it. And we don't know how they run. Therefore, in these heavenly places that you see above the sun, the moon, and the stars, they are there. And God knows that there are powers therein. Therefore, God forbids the worship of the sun, the moon, and the stars. Because when people discovered this, they began to worship those elements. And people now are taking over these ordinances that God has ordained to help us in order to oppress us. The heaven is supposed to declare the glory of God. It's supposed to give light on the earth. It's supposed to be for signs and for seasons. For days and for years. To rule the day and the night. But powers of darkness and enemies of God. They have captured those things. They are now using it to receive satanic worship. They are also using it to oppress man. What we are saying this evening is beyond I am going for deliverance. No. If somebody has raised an altar against your life in the star, it is more than I'm going for deliverance. Most deliverance cases, what we are doing is removing from a person's life a deposit or presence of darkness. It doesn't remove a conspiracy against you in the heavens. And then when you cross over from that first heaven to the second one, then you see an array of wicked spirits. And beloved, when we are talking about wicked spirits, we are talking about spirits that are even more wicked than the devil himself. Spirits that even the devil himself does not have control over them. Because they are wickedness incarnate. Right there in that second realm lies the abode of what we normally call ancestral spirits. And many people who pray day and night, as the angel of blessing is bringing their blessing down, they are confronted at the second heavens by ancestral spirits, angels of darkness, who will say, no, you will not take this down. This is why prayer is a difficult work. This is why we need the power and the spirit of Elijah. Because once once your prayers and your life is on the chariot of fire, it will go through without any hindrance. Remember, Daniel was on his knees for 21 days. But God answered his prayer day one. And an angel of God was bringing the answer back to Daniel. But right there at that second level, there was a wicked power that was strong enough to confront the angel that was bringing it. And if Daniel's had gotten up from his knees, that angel will have gone back. But the prayer that Daniel was praying now brought reinforcement from heaven. So when we are talking about wickedness, the most wicked spirits are over our heads above. And so I want you to understand this tonight. Just to give you some background so you know what we are talking about. But we as born again Christians, part of the authority that God gave to us, extends to the works of God's hands, all the works of God's hands, including the sun, the moon, the stars, and the host of heaven. According to Psalm 8, verse 6. Psalm 8, verse 6 says this. Psalm 8, verse 6. 
Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet. No matter how wild you are as an animal, man can put it under control. I was reading the testimony of those who went to evangelize in Ekwe. I mean, evangelists from this church. They went to Ekwe. They did a drive fast and they were going to break their fast with Akara and something else. So one sister sprayed on her food and the, the wind blew away her clothes. So she ran to go and bring her clothes back. By the time the sister would come back to her food, a snake had gotten there. The snake had eaten half of the Akara. The snake had punched the pure water bag open. And the snake was already eating the gari by the time she came. So men of God had to attack the snake and mounted the strange snake and burnt it. But those living in that building said they had never seen a serpent there before. We're talking about wickedness. And I want you to know that you either fight or you perish. There is no middle camp. All the churches where they are dancing and singing and jumping up now and playing this God. Don't worry. They are still coming back to pray. Serious prayer. They are coming back. Because there is a host of wickedness above us. And they sit down and plan evil. They devise evil. They mastermind it. Wickedness in the evilness. God gave us dominion over all these animals. He puts all things under interfaith, including the sun, the moon, the stars, and everything that God made. God knew that those bodies could misbehave and they could be used against us. But when we are ignorant of what to do, then they do all kinds of havoc to our lives. That's why in the Bible, you find many men of God who dealt with heavens and the elements. Moses caused darkness in Egypt and that dealt with the power of Egypt. Elijah too dealt with the elements of heaven. Deborah spoke to the stars. Isaiah, Isaiah turned the sun dial of hires. Joshua spoke to the sun and stopped it. Beloved, we need to wake up. There are many things we need to understand. One woman in the Lord many years back went to bury her father. And as he buried